Yeah. yeah. It's also great that you don't take um, you know the usual resource that a lot of fans use that is to take something of the present so people can relate to it right. and time it and yeah. Right. Right. Belmont is very much not a politically oriented band of mm. course. Yeah, it's all about it's all about you don't really have a message per yeah, se. Again, you said right. you said the fantasy. You know, taking fantasy and making it real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, is is so much of what we're about. You know, taking those those ideas of beauty that you don't see every day and making them present, making it so that you can sit there and you can you can be that. You can you can experience it. You know. <laughs> something uh, very unique about your band is one time one minute you're uh, on stage uh, into this very ethereal dream like dream like a uh, trance and then you'll also just uh, out of nowhere pull out a punk tune okay and <laughs> I'm gonna answer this question and uh, I was just uh, wondering where all this started this uh, this whole big uh, big uh, strong vein of punk in your music well that's not the question I was going to ask. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, whatever question you want to make yourself. Um, so. Well, I was just going to say that, like, it's, it's important to me in this band that we not be one specific style of music. I think that with a name like Bella Morte, which I think, not to sound like haughty or anything, but I mean, it means beautiful death. Mm -hmm. I think that pretty much sums up the goth scene, what the goth movement is about, if you want to call it. Yeah, well, that's... Right. Uh, and, and, uh... And we try and capture all aspects of that, from you know the synthy stuff to the new wave ish stuff to the like hard hitting goth stuff like Sisters and like um, the like the punk stuff you know like death rock, that is yeah. death rock influenced early Bat Cave that that whole scene you know like we try and cover it all yeah yeah we try and do, do it all with the exception of industrial but we'll work. We're working on industrial. Yeah, we don't have the right equipment to do industrial. If we did, we'd be doing it too. Yeah. <laughs> like, like you, you definitely. We just hear play somebody. the music that we love. I yeah. mean, I I play the music. Uh, this band is great for me because it's what I would want to hear. You know, it's the band that I've wanted to find in a record store. Well, who better to create music you want to hear than yourself? Nobody else can touch it.
Andy? Huh. Explain to me how much you like reality bites. Well, let's first off start with not seeing it. Oh, you didn't because see it? Ethan Hawke has redneck face. <laughs> uh, but he sings a violent femme song. Okay, now I'm upset. Well, I, I also it. just one fuck. Guess who managed never to see singles and is very proud of it. You seem to have a lot of uh, influence from movies and things that you see. Um, what are some of the what are some of the types of uh, films you watch and uh, take influence from? I love this question. Horror, fantasy, <laughs> sci-fi. Yeah. You know, pretty much grab it all, throw it in a bag, and make the 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 go. Yeah. yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> it's the finest film ever made. Uh, yeah, like Halloween, the, man. The first Halloween is beautiful. But, uh, yeah, Michael Myers is Andy's hero. Yeah, I'm getting a Myers tattoo <laughs> this year. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. I really like some of the, uh, I don't want to say independent film, but like Harvey Korine and yeah. you know, things of that nature I'm really into. Like, Julian Donkey Boy, I think, is probably one of the greatest movies ever made. <laughs> like, it is. I still gotta see it. Yeah. yeah I see <laughs> so I'm a. I'm all about like sci-fi, like Dune and, and, and Blade Runner. Oh, Blade like, Runner. Oh. Yeah. The book's like, even better. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. A different thing though, very different thing. I was yeah. going to say William Gibson. William, William Gibson, Gibson is yeah, the Gibson. man. Yeah. Neuromancer is awesome. Like, oh yay. Yeah, right. Can we give yeah. Howard a little plug here? Yeah. Uh, wrote the original Conan the Barbarian in Call of Duty. he is the man. Yes. Ooh, yeah, oh. Conan the Barbarian. Yay. Any <laughs> any influences, musical influences, or not only oh. musical but just artistic? Yeah, across. I mean, tons. we all have tons. Yeah, like like I mean, it's I, across I the board lot, with um, with. Yeah, all of us. Like a huge. Well, I want to hear every single one. Of all right, yeah, <laughs> go for it. Man. Fire off, Ben. Uh, I guess musical influences. You know, The Cure, The Cramps. Um, I don't know, Misfits. Uh, James Addiction, Slayer, um, uh, Smashing Pumpkins, um, you know, as far as musical, as far as, you know, like, authors, Neil Gaiman, Clive Barker, um, Terry Pratchett, you know, that's, that's the basics, like, for me, personally. Yeah, I'll go with uh, any Danzig project. Mm -hmm. Dan 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 like Dan 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 you know, I'll feel about yeah, just kind of second and third ate my ass. <laughs> but uh, the, like the first Halloween film, I love like the necromantic series, yeah. kind of artsy with horror. Even like if there's just if it's just horror related, I've always been into horror. Just love that the terror. Right. Yeah, love that. Just, but you know, even a lot of I listen to a lot of punk too. Like I, I'm I'm straight edge, not by modern definition, I guess, because I can't stand the straight edge scene anymore. Mm -hmm. What it's turned into. But uh, I've never had a had any alcohol, I've never had a drug, and I've never had a cigarette in my What life. is your reason behind it? I mean, I know it doesn't make... Never okay. had a reason. Never came up. Um, mm -hmm. Music became so big in my life when I was like, you know, 13, wherever, 14 or 15 when I got my first guitar, that it was my passion, and... Did you need anything else? Something? Not, nothing. And and partying has... has I, I guess I also watched so many friends partying. I was always, you know, the guy driving everybody around. It just never held an appeal mm -hmm. for me. And well, yeah. He's we'll crazy, and if you took yeah. a drug, you'd probably be normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so your turn. You're yeah, waiting yeah, so um, patiently. <laughs> um, yeah, I like. Uh, I guess. I guess. Uh, Caron Vincent Simone, which is like a old '80s, like my brother-in-law, like his, his band. Uh, um, Midnight Oil is a huge influence on oh, me. Oh, Midnight um, Oil. Yeah, it's it's great them, like, to hear someone else mention it. Yeah, I love them so much. Uh, uh, they did some really amazing stuff. Um, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, uh, first off, like Sisters, uh, Sisters of Mercy, huge influence. You know, all, all their, you know, their whole career pretty much. Well, Vision thing, not so much. And, and uh, much. Uh, there, there are a few good things there, yeah. but, but on the whole. Uh, um, See Will, um, I was. He got lived down the street from him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the band Will, the side project, front line side project. 
Um, uh, Who's the lead? We don't need. Yeah, like, next door love to you. early like Bat Cave and Death Rock, like yeah. you know, passion, like gee, oh man, like sex gang children and then sex being a uh, specimen, brilliant, <laughs> yeah. uh, like brilliant song, scream like an angel is, is my favorite song of all time. Like love that song. Um, you know, play dead. Uh, um, Really getting into psychobilly a lot now, like yeah. loving it, loving it. Like uh, Demented Argo are just funny, like so funny, like so great. But we listen to gothic rock, you know. We listen to the whole span from like the very neo medieval to like the very heavy industrial to like the total old school, like you know, like doom and gloom slash your wrist type guitar yeah. stuff, you know. And 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 we love it all, and we want to play it all. So we we write our little versions of them and <laughs> do it and that's fun. I hate the whole grunge era thing, like right? fuck all of that. That whole time like well, I was generation. Really, I was really into Pearl Jam and Soundgarden at the time too. So. Uh see I liked uh, Alice in Chains, like the first album. Um but I couldn't well, stand I like the wood. I liked that song. That was an alright song. But I couldn't stand the uh we're normal guys. We're just wearing our flannels and being guys. Uh, you know like Whatever, you're just fucking jocks. You're well, jocks that all, that, all that shit about them, like VH1 all the time, you know, like the behind the music, the 90s or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when music had to be serious and angst ridden, very much like we are. We are yeah. serious and angst ridden. Yeah, we're serious and angst ridden. We're so serious. Right now, still in Phoenix. And the reason we're standing outside of this hotel middle of the morning with shit to do because Joe Paul, who was initially rushing us out of the room while we were trying to watch Renaissance Man, fine, fine film with Danny DeVito. Did that get an Oscar? I think so. So, but basically, the phone rings. There's a little pause, a little hesitation, and then Ben picks up the phone. The girl on the other end. Name's Beth. Ben talks to Beth very briefly and in a very masculine voice. Like, talks to her like he would talk to anybody. Ends up that Beth doesn't want to talk to Ben. She wants to talk to Gopal. So uh, Gopal picks up the phone. And it's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You know, we're sitting there watching Renaissance Man, enjoying this fine film. And, and next thing you know, from across the room, we hear Gopal. And like, it's like he's been possessed by a kid. And, and he's like, Hello, what are you doing? And we look over and go, like, what the fuck's wrong with you, man? Are you all right? And he's like, hello, how have you been? Did you sleep well? I'm like, go, what are you doing, man? What the hell's wrong with you, dude? And we think that what happened is that like a kid died in our room, like hung himself, and then go, possessed by this kid. And, uh, so basically we're going to be performing an exorcism on Gopal to get whatever the hell got in there out of there. Maybe maybe it's the Bethsa witch, because I've seen it happen to him a few times talking to her. And his laugh changed a little bit. It's more like a ee, like a little giggle thing. And um, he missed you. And, and we don't know what the hell is going on, basically. So at this point, A, Gopal obviously possessed. B, the possession somehow linked to Beth. See exorcism. <laughs> You're not, boy. <laughs> He's all right now. <laughs> what kind of shit was just talking about me? <laughs> let's go. Oh, let's go now. We're in a rush again. Yeah, let's go. Let's go.